everyone and welcome to this video on how to monitor enzyme time costs. Now, more specifically, the aim for this experiment we're looking at is to investigate the effect of enzyme concentration on the rate of reaction. This is the reaction we're looking at today uh, using amylase as an enzyme to speed up the reaction for starch converting to maltose or glucose. There will be three steps involved here, well, three main steps. Number one is to use serial dilution to make a range of concentration of amylase. This allows us to get a range of different enzyme concentrations. Number two, we're going to monitor the enzyme time course by measuring the time taken for disappearance of starch because starch is a substrate and will be broken down over time. And we can look at the disappearance of starch using iodine tests. And number three, we can calculate the rate of reaction. Uh, based on the data we collected. And we're going to do step two and three for every single concentration, and then we should be able to see a trend. And as I mentioned, the first part of this experiment is really to do a serial dilution. In this case, we are working on a serial dilution by a factor of 10. There is generally two types of serial dilution, and you do need to read the question carefully in order to ascertain which one is required of you. In the previous video, I did a serial dilution with a factor of two, aka the concentration halves each time. But in this video, we'll be looking at serial dilution with a factor of 10, where you divide 10 with each subsequent concentration. To perform a serial dilution by a factor of 10, we usually use a 1 to 9 ratio, whereby we add one part of the solution, the previous concentration, to nine parts of distilled water. Therefore, our calculation should look something like this. Uh, usually, they will draw the beakers for you and you would need to draw the arrows and show the volumes of solution transferred. Again, it's a 1 to 9 ratio, 9 cm of the silt water in each beaker and then 1 cm cube of this MLA solution from the previous concentration. With the calculations done, we are now ready to do our serial dilutions in real life. First of all, don't forget to label the beakers. We have 2%, 0.2%, 0.02%, and 0.0002%. You know what I'm saying, right? Okay, and I start off by really adding distilled water to each beaker because I know each beaker would have 9 cm cube of distilled water. Then only I transfer that 1 cm cube from a previous concentration and then move the syringe up and down in order to mix properly. So this is me transferring 1 cm cube from one beaker to another until all concentrations are prepared. Now that we are done, preparing our different concentrations of amylase, we can then go ahead and monitor the time cost for the reaction. So we're going to add 3 cm cube of starch, and then to that we add 1 cm cube of amylase, and immediately start the stopwatch. And the idea is, every 15 seconds, we will monitor the time course by taking a drop of the reaction mixture and putting it on the spotting tile. Now, at first, starch will still be present, and therefore, the, the iodine is going to turn blue. But after a while, that dark blue should become lighter and lighter and eventually be yellow. So after a certain amount of time, the iodine test would be negative because it would have no starch. And that's when you know whole starch has been converted to maltose or glucose and the reaction is complete. Let's take a look of how this is done in real life. So I add the two mixtures together into a test tube. And you can see me doing that here and immediately start this timer. Okay, uh, I'm using glass rod to stir and every 15 seconds I'm going to drop it onto the spotting towel and I'm going to rinse the glass rod quickly in water, which is the beaker that I'm dipping it in there. This video is obviously sped up so you can see how it's um, super crazy fast here. Okay, so it's always stir, 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 drop it into one well and then a little dip into this water just to rinse off the excess iodine. And you repeat this until uh, the solution in the well um, remains yellow. 
I did this for three minutes just to make sure it didn't turn back to blue, but this is actually not necessary once um, the solution has shown you a negative test result that's probably a good time to stop so this here is the final results that i got as you can see in the first three wells the solution has turned blue however in the fourth well onwards this solution remained yellow so the iron test is negative telling me that hey at 60 seconds which is in the fourth well this reaction has been completed and then you repeat the experiment that I just showed you for all the different concentrations. So you repeat the experiment with different concentrations of MLAs and you should come up with these results. This raw table is uh, drawn for us in the manual that we use. Uh, but in the exam, they may give you instructions to draw a similar table. Now with our, our results, we can then process that results um, and figure out the rate of reaction. The rate of reaction is 1 over the time taken for iodine solution to stop changing to blue. Now just a few reminders, make sure that the time taken is always in seconds and whole numbers and wherever there's decimal places inside the body of the table, make sure that it's the same number of decimal places throughout. Now, because the instruction says that it doesn't change blue even uh, after 180, we just followed the instructions. I wrote more than 180 and literally wrote zero for the rate of reaction as well. Last but not least, most importantly, you need to show a trend in your results. And this would be something that is based on your understanding as well, right? So a higher concentration of MLAs would definitely have a higher rate of reaction and would have a shorter time for the iodine solution to stop changing blue. So this should be reflected in both the raw results as well as the process results. The trend must be there because the trend has marks. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.